hope. Uh, Adam Green, you're the returning champion here, having appeared on the show, as we say, uh, more times than anyone other than <laughs> myself. Uh, that what Nancy Pelosi had just had to say sounded pretty reasonable, didn't it? Yeah, there's lots of reasonable stuff being said on the left. Look, our only point is you don't compromise on a fight you can win. You don't compromise without a fight. And what we've seen recently is that only 26 percent of Americans support the Republican position. A majority of Republican voters independent voters and Democratic voters support our position. And my basic question is this. Is there a single Republican in Congress right now who has felt any political pain or pressure back home in the last month since the election as a result of being on the wrong side of th this issue? And if the answer is no, well, that means the president I, didn't fight and there's a space to uh, give up without a fight. Can I, Adam, you're in the business of causing pain for politicians. You made life very painful for some Democrats this year, including Blanche Lincoln, helping with a primary challenge. Have you and your organization made life painful or difficult for any Republican? I am proud to report, Lawrence, that ours is the only organization right now that has ads up uh, taking on Olympia Snow in Maine, Scott Brown in Massachusetts, John Boehner in Ohio, and Eric Cantor in Virginia. The DNC doesn't, the DCCC doesn't, the DSCC doesn't, none of the Democratic Party institutions do. We are the only ones, and I hope that more join our cause. But we also have to hold this president accountable to his promises and ask him to actually fight before he gives up. Okay, I just want to get something straight from everyone tonight, starting with you, Adam, strategically on where uh, we stand now. Uh, are you an advocate of having the president uh, stand firm on the original position and, if necessary, allowing the tax rates to expire on December 31st and allowing uh, the Clinton tax rates to then resume on January 1st, creating a tax increase for every American income taxpayer? Listen. Republicans just showed that they are willing to kill no, their no, no. own. No, no, we got to be quick on this. I just no, want to know the strategically. Is yes. as, as a negotiation posture, you have to not be willing a negotiation to go into next year. Posture. I mean, would you be actually willing to do it? Some people are saying yeah. that's what you should do. Uh, there are people in this network saying we should be negotiating this tax bill in February and in March after uh, uh, some taxpayers, all taxpayers, have been forced to pay higher taxes so that we can then force and shame the Republicans into doing the right thing and that that, would, that strategy would actually work. It's worth it to put people through the pain of paying more taxes in January, February, March, maybe, in order to get a deal. Are you someone who believes the deal has to be concluded, if there's going to be one, by December 31st, or it's okay to negotiate this into the next year? This is not a tough question to me. It is okay to negotiate it, absolutely. Okay, we have great. to hold the Republicans accountable. Jane, Jane Hampshire, uh, just start with that strategic question of should there, should there be a conclusion to this by December 31st, or should Democrats be willing to allow the Democratic tax rates, the Clinton tax rates, to be imposed uh, by law as they, are, or they currently would be on, de on January 1st? Well, this is so the question presumes that there is a cohesive position that the Democrats have. And unfortunately, because of the way that the president did this, there is no cohesive position in the Senate. They didn't do, you know, Lawrence, you know what procedure is and how these things are handled in the Senate. You brief the leadership and then you bring in key senators and you tell them what the deal is. And then they, 10 or 20 of them, get together and they release a letter saying, we support this when it comes out. They didn't tell anybody anything. They, re they sent them all a sheet with a bunch of bullet points. The senators are getting calls going, what do you think about this? They go, we don't know anything about it. Hasn't been, we haven't been briefed. They haven't seen the legislation yet. There is no legislation yet. And the president calls a press conference and it's the first thing anybody hears about it. They're on fire up there. Joe Biden went up today and he got his clock cleaned by the progressive <laughs> caucus of the Senate. There is no unity. Who, I, I, nobody can even figure out what's going on. Well, the plan is very simple. It's, it's out there. It's very clear. I guarantee you that the chairman of the Finance Committee, Max Baucus, was involved and his staff was involved in putting it together. But I want to get to this strategic question of what is there to do now? There are people advocating that this president abandon this agreement and allow the Clinton tax rates, an increase for every taxpayer in America, to go into effect on January 1st. And I just want to know strategically, going forward from here, Jane, do you think think that is a strategic option for Democrats that they should be willing to do it? 
I, as you and Adam know, was an advocate of negotiating the best deal that you could and not holding hostage, not allowing them to take hostages. But the two million people who are unemployed, the 99ers, they didn't get help in this deal. And the president has been going on, as have the Republicans, about the need to close the deficit. And they just decided to go on a spending spree together. After having gone on and on about the deficit for so long, you sound incoherent for doing this. You have no philosophy. This is not the way things get done. I have to say, I agree with Adam. No. Veto it. Veto it. He's the president. John Boehner said if that was all he had the option to vote for was tax okay. cuts, so, veto it. So you're now in favor of, you're moving off your position of last week where you wrote a piece about how they should, they should strike the best deal they can now with Republicans and you're now willing to veto this and let taxes increase on January 1st? There were, th the, the, the centrist Democrats on the Hill wanted the Chuck Schumer million dollar deal. Obama moved in and killed that deal and negotiating a deal that was worse than what the conservatives want. That is not a position that has anything that's defensible about it. He went straight well, to the Republicans and Obama said, let me give you everything you want. The truth is, that, Roger, um, what do you think uh, was wrong with, with the president making this deal at this time, given that the Republicans, let's just everybody remember, let's set the table for January. The Republicans take over the House of Representatives. They don't just become a stronger minority. They control it. They control the Ways and Means Committee. A Republican chairman of the committee controls the writing of this bill. They control the agenda. How would you expect to get something better in the next Congress with Republicans controlling the House of Representatives? Well, let me just say, I, I appreciate the practical wisdom that you bring to this uh, situation, but it's also true, and we have to remember that this situation, this predicament, is of Obama's <laughs> own making, is of the Democrats' own making. The, Obama has signaled from the very beginning that he was willing to surrender, and so surrendering again is advances no one's interests here except the interests of the top two percent the super rich uh, as sherrod brown has been saying what we need to see this president do what president obama needs to do is go on the road and make the case for his putatively preferred policy to the american people and shame the republicans into doing the right thing they're not going to do it out of the goodness of their own hearts uh, all he's doing here is has demonstrating... Any, can you just stop for a second? Can you cite me a, a Democratic president who has shamed Republicans into voting for a tax increase of any bracket? Look, Herbert Hoover, Brock Hoover Obama is not going to... Uh, no, win but, this but Roger, fight. you're suggesting a strategy that has never worked before, has never been employed before. L Name me well, the Lawrence. Republican. Woodrow you can Wilson shame that's into true. forced that's Congress true. to 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 take on policies that they didn't want to take on. You know. Uh, okay, can, I, can I help answer that question? Please. Go ahead, Adam. The, the re, uh, give him hell, Harry. There's a reason he was called give him hell, because he barnstormed the nation. I, I told you on this show before, I was in South Dakota when President Bush barnstormed South Dakota and put pressure on my senator, Tim Johnson, at the time, and, Pres and Tim Johnson then did what Bush wanted. A Democrat. Why is it and, essentially and different for a Democrat rather yeah. than a Republican? The Democrats need to yet. learn from You've the Republican. the two-party system long enough and you don't know the difference between a Democrat no. and Republican? Is Harry Truman? No, uh, certainly we know There's the nothing difference. clearer than a different than the yes, Democrats. The Democrats and always surrender. That's Lawrence, the difference. Lawrence, you're not making uh, ahead, any old position. Adam, to, uh, Adam, Adam finish your point this. about Tim no. Johnson. Go ahead. It's a good no, point. Tim, Tim Johnson. Uh, well, it's the same thing. This, uh, Tim Johnson did what President Bush wanted. When President when President Obama wanted Dennis Kucinich to vote for his health care plan, he went to his state commanded local media station attention, rallied his constituents, and Kucinich caved. The, I, the, the fact that you're disputing the idea of a presidential bully pulpit is honestly shocking to me. I don't understand it. No, I